I think if you look at the key phrase in mobilizing people, for civil society, this is a key action and arguably at this time the weakest link of our actions to fight corruption. Historically, civil society has fought corruption by doing three things. Firstly, by putting a lot of political pressure at the top for change. We've been very good at that. Secondly, we had and we continue to have programs that we run in key areas that we want to have a domino effect to bring about systematic change and we've been quite good at that. The third pillar, namely pressure from bottom up, arguably over the years have been the one where we've been the weakest at. Over the last couple of years we have seen both the efforts within the anti-corruption movement as well as from ordinary citizens across the world taking action against corruption as being the most critical game changer in bringing about system sustainable change in fighting corruption and in that sense mobilizing people is really very much in tune with what is happening in the world out there and what is the next major frontier to bring about fundamental change in the way that we fight corruption. Because fighting corruption is not only about effective ways to deal with corruption, it's also about social justice. And that I think is brought together very poignantly in mobilizing people to bring an end to corruption and bring greater social justice to the world. So uh, in that sense, I think uh, this conference, the time in which it takes place, as well as the way that it is structured, is indeed uh, very, very exciting. Well, I think that uh, uh, if you look at, at protest and civil action against injustices and for human rights over the last uh, decade, uh, they've had very particular patterns of not happening in one location at any time, whether you look at the fight against colonialism, whether you look at the fight uh, against uh, ending the Cold War. Uh, most of these were actions that were frustrations about injustices bottled up, not in one country or one city, but across bigger areas and where the domino effect, once action started, uh, was in most cases one that was unstoppable and irreversible. And I think the same we've seen in the last couple of years where the demand for public accountability and an end to corruption became something that uh, really uh, was a major uh, driver for change. It's the key driver in my view of the Arab Spring and I think that what we've seen in uh, countries beyond uh, the Arab uh, speaking world are very much in, in that framework of uh, ordinary citizens not only saying that they no longer want to live with uh, corruption but that they also say that they want to have their leaders in all sectors to be held accountable for their actions and I think that uh, those we've seen over the last two three years take a variety of forms they can be about food price increases they can be about issues of access to medical care um, but ultimately I think they are about uh, ordinary citizens saying that they want a greater uh, public accountability in, in all spheres of life and I think that uh, is, is very much also what we've seen uh, in Brazil and uh, is a fantastic uh, backdrop uh, for us to plan to have the ICC in a country that is critical to that region, that is critical to the world and of course 
will also have the eyes of the world focused on it with the Olympics and the World Soccer Cup. So for Brazil there's a lot to be gained uh, to bring in uh, best practices in terms of public accountability. Well, I think the ICC has, over the years, uh, created a very important platform for multi-stakeholder engagement, bringing civil society, business community and governments together. Uh, and for any initiative to run for a long time, one has to, from time to time, take a step back, pause and think, does it really make a contribution still? And I think that uh, in this time when we have a particular awareness across the world that the existing institutional networks of global governance have really been unable to deal with global crises the importance of multi-stakeholder consultations, multi-stakeholder involvement is more important than ever before. So in that sense, the ICC has been, uh, if you look back historically, has been ahead of its time. Uh, the challenge for the ICC now is whether it can work with these constituencies, bring them together, and particularly uh, be a vehicle where this uh, quest for increased public accountability can be part of how these multi-stakeholders interact. And I think that will be a major challenge, particularly because the existing institutions, as they exist in civil society, in the public sector, in the business community, are by and large not fully engaged or tapped in to broader social movements. And those are the ones that are increasingly uh, bringing about fundamental social change across the world. So it is not only can we bring these multi-stakeholders together in the ICC, but can the ICC also, in the way that it brings these constituencies together, also have a much greater involvement with broader social movements. Social movements that spring up and take on an issue and again dissolve. Uh, and that only time will tell whether the ICC can do that uh, efficiently, but I think that is for both the ICC as well as for the anti-corruption movement, the key challenge to harness a new model of multi-stakeholder engagement and particularly a model that will have on the one hand much greater demands on public accountability and on the other hand not f form part of the old structures of governance in the way that, that we've known them. And uh, that's a challenge for the ICC, that's a challenge for uh, those fighting corruption, and I think it's a challenge for all of those that look for both better as well as more just uh, global governance in the years to come.